Let's lift our hands tonight to the Lord. And let's tell him how great he is here in the house tonight. Jesus, you are so great. And we are grateful that you came into our life. And we are grateful, Lord, that you snatched us out of darkness and brought us into your marvelous light. And Father, we are forever thankful. And we are here, Lord, because we love you. And because we know that you're not finished with me yet. Oh, come on, somebody. God is not finished with you yet. And so, God, we incline our ears to your word. We open our hearts and our minds to receive your word. Not an empty meaningless chatter but a revelation of heaven a revelation of your power a revelation God of your strength and your will for our lives Lord we need your word may we be a people of the word God and so God open the ears of those who can't hear Remove the scales from the blind so that they can see, so that they can fathom, Lord, what you're saying to the church tonight. Father, we're so grateful. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And if you agree with that, you say amen right now. Amen. Wow. We got a packed house tonight. Go ahead and give your neighbor a high five as you grab your seat. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm excited to be here. We're going to go right into the Word of God. I want to talk about entering in to new places. Tell your neighbor, I'm going in. Tell your other neighbor, I'm going in. With or without you, I'm going in. New places. How many are ready to go to new places this year? How many are tired of the old place? Praise the Lord. There are three places that every follower of God will visit. Nobody is excluded from visiting these three places. You call yourself a follower of Jesus, you say, well. But each of us will go in to the same place three places. The first place is Egypt. All of us came from this place. Egypt is the place of our sin. It's the place of our captivity. It's the place where God found you, where God saved you, where God rescued you. God took you out of your sin, out of bondage, out of the hand of the devil. God came and rescued you out of Egypt. How many of you are grateful that God took you out of that place? The second place that we all visit is called the wilderness. The wilderness is after you leave Egypt. You enter into dry places. 
Nobody is excluded from this place. Even Jesus himself, after receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit, he himself, as a human, had to go into the wilderness to experience everything that we experience. The wilderness is a place where you're free, but you're still trying to figure how to live free. Because living free is a lot different than living as a slave. And if you've never been free, then you have trouble trying to figure out how this all works. Because I was a slave for a long, long time. And when Jesus rescued me and pulled me out of the house of bondage and set me free, I didn't know what to do. What do I do now? I don't know how to pay a bill. I don't know how to write a check. I know how to steal. I know how to smoke weed. But I don't know how to do life right. And so I had to go for a number of years through dry places. Some of us here tonight are still in Egypt. You're still a slave, a slave to the devil, a slave to your sin, a slave to the world. And you cannot fake the fact that you're still in bondage. That's why it's hard to praise God during worship. That's why it's hard to lift your hands in worship. That's why it's hard to jump and shout for joy because you are still a slave to your own devices. We're glad you're here because we welcome all kinds. No matter where you're at, we love you. And we are, have all been there. Nobody can deny that they've been there. Some of us have got out of the house of bondage and you're in the wilderness trying to figure out Christianity. Trying to figure out how to walk with God. How to follow Jesus. And that could take years to figure out. That's why we have Power of 12 groups. That's why we have discipleship. That's why we have freedom at the way. That's why we have prospering at the way. So that you can expedite the process and get out of the wilderness faster. Because if you lollygag around in the wilderness, it could take you years to get out of there. Some people never get out. You're still saved, but you're stuck. The third place that every believer or follower of Christ will come to is a land of promise. The land of promise is a place that God calls home. It is a land of peace, abundance, prosperity, victory, worship, true praise. Everyone wants to get to that place. All of us here are in different places. But God has sent me here tonight to tell you you're about to move. Oh, I feel a shift going on in here. Somebody's about to move from one place to the next place. Oh, if you're in Egypt right now, you ought to get happy right now because you're about ready to come out of that place. Tell your neighbor, I'm coming out. (laughs) 
when you get to the promised place, here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to think that you've arrived. Because it is possible, even for the most anointed people, people that operate in spiritual power, is not, how do you say, my spirit, my, my spirit is out, out thinking my mind. Everyone is expendable. Everyone is a target. It could happen to the best of them. And if you reach the promised place and you come into an area where you think you've arrived and you develop a pharisaical pride in you, it is possible that you could start all over again. If you look at Israel... They were not only captives in Egypt. They were captives again in Assyria. Then they were captives again in Babylon. They were captives again in Roman in Romans. Now, not only are we all trying to reach the same place, we're also trying to learn how to live and stay in that promised place. Because I don't want to visit. I want to occupy. I don't want to just pop in and say hi. I want to reside. I want to build a house in that place. I want to bring my family into that place. I want to bring friends and other people into that place. Because when you enter into that place, you have found the route. And when you find the route, you are very, very valuable. Because that's all people need is direction to the place. Some people will try and hide the directions because they won't be the only people in that place. God is taking us to a new place. Tell your neighbor, pack your bags. Pack your bags. Let's go. Today I was at the gas station and I was having a serious moment trying to connect with the Lord. You know how you get real serious with the Lord? You try, never mind. <laughs> trying to get a vision or something. You're just trying to get a vision here. And when I was putting gas, I looked up from, the, from my car, from the gas pump. And I saw three grannies. Three old, older, old women. I'm worried about offending anyone. I'm not going to, I'm 51. They're older than me. They must have been like 80, 85, 90, 150. No, I'm just kidding. They were old timers and they caught my attention and took me out of my little prophetic thing I had going on because they were riding they raced around the corner they whipped around the corner and they were in a car that was a convertible it was like a red Mustang and the younger granny was driving, and there was a granny in the back left side, and there was another granny on the right side, and they were bobbing their head, smiling, and what, the one on the right was doing this. I'm like, what is she doing? I thought she was throwing gang signs at me. 
But they were so joyful. They were so happy when I was trying to be so spiritual. And I asked the Lord, what's wrong with them? And he said, they are full of joy because they are going places. People that are going places are full of joy. If you ain't going any place, then you ain't full of joy. You're full of depression. You're full of bondage. You're still a hostage. And you're going nowhere. And it's robbing your joy. But people who are going places, those are the fun people. I would have liked to jump in that car with those grannies. For some of us, you are coming out of one place and you're getting ready to go into another place. Uh-huh. Stand up if that's you right now and say, I'm coming out. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I knew. I knew. I knew. I knew. I knew it. You're coming out of one place and you're about ready to go into another place and God is getting you ready for your biggest transition of your life tell your neighbor you're closer than you realize um. it's good uh, thank you Jesus now, there are some people who manage to get out of a place, but they cannot seem to get into the next place. If you've gotten out of one place, but are struggling to get into a new place, here's what you need to know. Don't quit. Don't quit. Because it's equally as important to get out of the old place as it is to get into the new place. Don't settle for just getting out. Go all the way and get in to the next place. Because the same God who got you out is the same God who will bring you in. God will not let you fail. God will empower you. God will deliver you. God will help you get into the next place. Oh, he didn't just get me out so I can go in circles. He got me out so I can go places. Go into some places. And so I'm not settling. And I'm not going to quit. Tell your neighbor I ain't quitting. In the book of Numbers chapter 13, the Bible says this in verse 23. When God's people came to the valley of Eshcol, they cut down a branch with a single cluster of grapes so large that it took two of them to carry it on a pole. They came out of Egypt. They came through the desert. And now they are on the threshold of the promised land. They are right there on the border, ready to go into the new place. And they sent men into that land to check it out. And the men brought back clusters of grapes so large that they could not carry it. They also brought back 
some samples of the pomegranates and the figs. Somebody say samples. Verse 20, uh, 27. This was their report to Moses. They went in. They got some very large fruit. They brought it back. And they reported to their leader. And this was the report. We entered the land you sent us to explore. And it is indeed a bountiful country. A land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of fruit that land produces. Here is the proof of the pudding. Here is the evidence of God's promise. Here is the manifestation of what God declared several years ago in the invisible realm. That I'm going to send you on a journey and you're going to chase a dream. And you're going to follow a cloud by day and fire by night until you reach this place. They have been chasing a dream. Trying to reach an unseen place. People probably thought they were crazy. People probably think you're crazy. Why are you spending so much time chasing a Jesus that you cannot see? Why are you so infatuated with the invisible realm? They probably saw these people walking through the desert as lunatics. Serving a God that they could not see. Other people have idols and statues. They could see what they're worshiping. No, but these people were following a God who was completely invisible. Being led by an invisible God. Now that just sounds crazy. Think about it. When you told all your relatives that you found Jesus... Uh, that's what they probably, oh, uh, yeah, okay. Whatever that means. But to all those who doubted, their dream is becoming a reality. And they had the evidence in their hands. They had grapes. They had pomegranates. They had figs to show that God is not a man that he should lie. That God is a man who comes through with all his promises to those who seek his face. To those who follow him by faith. To those who believe in him although they cannot see him. To those who are willing to give their life to follow and journey with Jesus. God is revealing something when you reach this place. Evidence is going to be presented. And nobody's going to be able to deny what God is doing in your life. Because a proof will be in the pudding. You'll have evidence to show them that the power of God is real. Now think about this. Grapes, pomegranates, figs. What's happening here? God is giving them a taste test. Some of you are getting a taste test tonight. And when you taste of the Lord and how good he is, you're going to want some more. And so you'll be back on Sunday. And you'll be back throughout Christmas. And you'll pop up at a Doppler block. Heck, you might be in Tijuana by the end of the week. Who knows? Because you've tasted of the Lord and mm, 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 
He is good. And God is giving them just a snippet, a taste of what is to come. I grew up in the 70s. Anyone here from the 70s? Only like three people. In the 70s, you would go into the supermarket and they would have samples. There'd be a nice old lady right there. I don't know what the old lady thing tonight is, but there'd be a nice old lady right there with the apron on and she had little samples and you walk into the store and I remember walking in there with my mom and I, was, I always wanted to go because I knew that the lady with the samples would be there and then I would get some good food. I would get some good snacks, and I would skip down the aisle holding my mom's hand. I remember that clearly, vividly. Aisle two, there's a lady right by the bread that has the little samples. The cereal came out in 1970s called Fruity Pebbles. Oh, I love me some Fruity Pebbles. I still love them today. But when they came out and I got the sample, I went bananas. Mom, I got to have this. I got to have this. I want this. Buy it for me. I'd probably cry like a, you know, little kids cry. Crying and whining, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. And my mom would not let me buy those things because we couldn't afford it. That was a top shelf item. The stuff we buy, son, are down here. And they are the same thing as these things. It's the same thing. And so I didn't get fruity pebbles. I got fruity tooties. (laughs) Embarrassing. And they came in a big bag, like dog food. (laughs) Big old bag, like dog food. And I go out the store with that bag of fruity tooties. And I bring it home. And I pour it in a bowl. And I had to add sugar because there's no sugar in the fruity tooties. And the moment the milk hit the tooties, dissolved like a sponge. I first tried Fruity Pebbles at my friend's house up the street. They had some money. And I came home and I told my mom, I swear, those things, Fruity Tooties, are not the same as Fruity Pebbles. I've tasted, and now I know the difference. God is giving them, uh uh-huh, God is giving them, uh uh-huh, God is giving, God is about ready to give you a little sample of what is to come. Because there is a difference between wilderness food and promised land food. Yeah, there's a big difference. There's a difference between manna and quail versus milk and honey. Yeah, there's a big difference. Here's what you need to know. In each place, the menu changes. In the new place, God changes your diet. In Egypt, in the land of bondage, they ate rotten food. In the wilderness, in the land of wandering, they ate the same food. In Canaan, in the land of promise, they're about ready to eat the giant's food. So your place determines what you eat. 
So you cannot say that you're living in the promised land when you got manna all over your lips. When quail meat's falling out of your pants at the altar. I'm in the promised land. I don't think so. Because you got manna all over your lip. Now everyone's looking at each other's lips right now. I see it going on. It's that white stuff that accumulates right here. Then you know. The place that you're at, it determines what you eat. Food that was rotten in Egypt was eaten because my life was rotten. Food that I ate in the wilderness was the same food because I was making the same mistakes over and over and over and over again. But when I reached Canaan, the food was large because now I was eating the promises of God. I was eating the word of God. I was eating God's word. I lived and breathed and, and, and I love God's word more than anything. And when you love God's word, you know that you're in a very special place. When you're in this place, nothing will deter you from him. When you're in this place, you are completely rooted. When you are in this place, you are completely grounded because you have tasted of God's word and nothing is ever like it. You got three people in the back that love the word. How many people in here love to eat the word of God? The word of God is the promises of God, the ways of God. And that is our bread and butter. In verse 30, the Bible says this, Caleb said... Let's go in at once and take the land. We can certainly conquer it. But the other men who had explored the same land disagreed. They said, we can't go up against them. Those giants are stronger than we are. So you have a line that's being drawn among the people of God. They are all believers. They are all followers. They are all children of God, but they all don't think the same. They all don't believe the same. There's a line that's drawn between the cans and the cans. Between the wills and the wounds, between the faithful and the fearful. And God is identifying what people really, really want it. Because not everyone in a room like this really, really want it. I, I, would, I, would bet, I would bet that there's about 10 people in this room right now that really, 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 really want it. I want to get out of this place. I am sick of this place. I want to go into a new place. I am tired of the drugs. I'm tired of the pornography. I'm tired of the death. I am so sick of this place. I want to get out. Is there anybody in this place that's ready to get out? There are people who want the best, but don't want to pay the price to get it. And the same people try and tell you why you can't have it either. 
The same people tell you what you can and you cannot eat. The same people tell you, rebuke you, correct you. Hey, you can't eat that. That's the giant's food. That food don't belong to you. That's upper level food there, baby Christian. This stuff down here is your stuff. You, don't, you, can't, you can't handle this stuff. You haven't paid for this stuff. You can't afford this stuff. And those same people make excuses for why they settle for less. I don't want a mediocre Christian life. I don't want a lukewarm life. I don't want a watered down Jesus. I want the fire and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want Jesus. I'm talking about the real Jesus. I'm not talking about cute little baby Jesus. I'm talking about the God who came to this world to save me, to redeem me from the curse of the law, to help me and set me free. I'm tired of people telling me what I can and cannot have. If God said that I can have it, then I'm going to take it. If God said I'm going in, then let's go in. If God told me that I could have it, I want it. If God promised to, to me, I'm going to go get it. And you can come with me or you can stay in the wilderness. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Somebody give him praise and glory in this house. Come on, give them praise and glory if you're going to a new place. Give God a shout, your best shout. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. God, sit down, you guys are like too excited. God would never, 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 never. He never would let you taste it if it wasn't yours. He never, 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 never would have let you touch it if he wasn't going to give it to you. Let me close. The giants, I, I hate the giants. By the way, Pastor Rob. Go Dodgers. The Giants are there to prevent you from taking what God has promised you. And unless you're willing to go up against your Giants, then you will not ever enter in to the land. You might see the land. You might taste the land. You might see others go into the land. But unless you conquer your own giant, you will not enter in. Nobody's saying that you won't go to heaven. We're not saying that. But you'll never live a completely victorious, fulfilling, Christ-led life. The problem is not the land. The problem is not the place. The problem is not the promise. The problem is that you have a giant and he's standing in the way of your promise. And so your promise that God has given you a land that flows with milk and honey, continuous. The word flow means continuous flow. That means it never runs out. That land that God wants to give you, provision and sustenance and, 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 and blessing, that land that God wants to give you, that promise is wrapped up in a problem. 
you have a big problem. Because the giant is holding on to your promises. And if you consider what your promises are, such as, I want my life back. Such as, I want my family back. Such as, I want to get out of this prison. I want to be delivered. And the giant is holding on to all these promises. And so you, my friend, have a big problem. Because if you want more than a sample, then you're going to have to take the food from your giant. Why would God send me to a place, a promised place, so that I could face a giant? I went all this way. Lord, we came all this way. And there it is. But it's in someone else's hands. This is the first adaptation of spiritual warfare. Where we go in and take it by force. Mm -hmm. There's only a few people clapping because that's a lot of work. That's a lot of fighting. Maybe that's why God chose you. Because you were good at fighting in the streets, but you're terrible at fighting in the spirit. I think some of us need to get strong in the Lord so that you can fight these giants a little better. Tell your neighbor we're in a fight. Let's close. Stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. God led us all this way so that we could pick a fight. Now listen. Where's our worship team? Listen, listen, listen. Because I'm going to say this a little different. No, no, just leave this here. Close your eyes. Listen, listen, listen to this verse. And the men reported to Moses, we saw giants in the land. And next to them giants, we felt like grasshoppers. And that's what they thought too. Now listen, listen. Because somebody in this room you feel so insignificant. You feel like a grasshopper standing against a giant. And the devil is agreeing with you. And you feel so worthless. How in the world am I going to get my life back? And I know that God sent me here tonight to tell you that you are not a grasshopper. You're not. You don't need to clap. You don't need to clap. So those people who feel like they're facing huge odds. God is going to demonstrate his power to you and get you into this new place. I speak to you by the word of God, that God himself is going to fight for you. You're not going to have to lift a hand. That God is going to take you 
insignificant grasshopper, weakling. And he's going to slay your giant. And you will enter in to this place. And you will enter into the land of the living. If that's you here tonight, I want you to spring out of your, out of your chair and come up here quickly. Come up quickly. You're facing insurmountable odds. You have no, how I, no idea how God is going to fix it. Everything is stacked against you. Come. I put my faith in Jesus. If you want to go to a new place, come. If you're living in Egypt, come. If you're ready to get out of the wilderness, come. Come on, let's give praise to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My hope and firm foundation. You never let me down. Come, 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 come. Yes. You are loved by God. You are his precious gem. You are redeemed. You are born again. You are the light of the world. You are my child. I formed you in your mother's womb. I brought you here so that you can reveal my spirit and my power to your friends and to your family. I saved you. I redeem you. And I will deliver you. Lift up your hands. God's going to change your identity. Ready? One, two, three. Change. Change in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. You came forward. Lift your hands to the Lord. Jesus. Repeat after me. Jesus. Jesus. I, surrender I surrender my will, my will for, your will. for your will. Your will be done, will be done in my life. In my life. Forgive me Forgive for all my sins. All my sins. Come in. And take me places. Take me to the promised place. Bring me out of this place and bring me into your place. I give my life to you this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen.